where we left. So we had introduced last time MATLAB and Image Processing Toolbox, and we discussed some uh, basic operations like addition, adding images, and uh, so on. I have also sent some uh, whatever the material from the last class. Hopefully, you have reviewed it. So we'll continue from there. So uh, last time we discussed uh, adding of two images. Similarly, if you want to subtract images, that itself has many applications, even a simple operations like image subtraction. So here, for example, um, whenever we want to highlight difference, suppose there is a change in a certain scene which we are capturing, and we want to highlight a difference, what is happening, we can do simple subtraction. So an example is being shown here. Um, it's an application in some medical image processing. So this image is actually a reference image or the mask image, what we say. So this is before any operation that was happening. So after that, probably in this image, if you go and read in the book, uh, some this angiography, sorry, process. So some uh, something was uh, getting in was being injected into the patient's uh, bloodstream. So after after the injection of that iodine medium or whatever some medium, uh, these are the new images that are coming. So as so these are basically your uh, let us say. This is your live image. So if you do simple subtraction, so let me call it as R, let me call this as I. So simple subtraction, pixel by pixel of I, X, Y minus R, X, Y. will give you this kind of a so this is the subtracted image probably so this will show where wherever the changes are in the new image so the new, the changes are getting highlighted and all other details are getting they are getting subtracted out so as and when and probably this is this is another subtracted image after so as the iodine medium is getting uh, so as that medium is uh, uh, spreading into the blood vessels of the person's uh, patients thing we can see the progress as how it is happening and how the body is reacting. So this kind of uh, simple process, uh, simple subtraction process helps uh, in many, many applications from medical imaging. Uh, we'll see later on some other images, or some other applications also. But before that, uh, sometimes what we would like to have instead of subtracting from one image to another image, so when we do a simple subtraction here, for example, <clears throat> sometimes we may want to, instead of having a, we may want to uh, preserve the absolute difference rather than subtract, subtracted value. Because in that case, we may just be, either we may be just interested in the actual magnitude of the difference in uh, whether the change is happening in, in I or whether the change is happening in, so sometimes there may be positive change, sometimes there may be negative change. So we may be just interested in an absolute difference so in that case, simple. Uh, how will you do that? For example, in case this is a quiz for you. Let us say we have two images A and B, both in uh, unsigned int 8 data type. So they can only store values from 0 to 255. And now if you are interested to actually get the mod of A minus B. And let us say we have a function, absolute function. Which, uh, which will basically only give the, uh, the magnitude of the difference. So which of these four op operations will help you preserve the image difference, the absolute image difference? So Here, for example, when we are taking the absolute value of A, 
this has no meaning as such because a is already between 0 to 5 5 similarly absolute of b has no meaning as such is already between 0 to 5 5 and when we are subtracting this 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 operation is equivalent to doing a minus b itself and as soon as we do a minus b because the data the data type is still unsigned it eight, the negative image will be clipped to the, the negative values will be clipped to zero we will be only having the positive difference values and after 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 it is already clipped to zero if you take the absolute value it has no meaning isn't it so you have already lost the negative difference you are only having the because the data type is only unsigned it eight. so you may do it in the lab so you, you may accidentally do it in implement the code like that way but you may not get the desired result so this will not help so what will help will, will this help unsign in 16 will this help why it will help when you are if it is only unsigned in 16 you are only increasing uh, the number of bits but you are still storing the positive value so this is also not going to this is also not going to help will it help to convert to floating point hmm why not floating point will store negative values float float data type stores negative value so if you convert it to double of float and then to a subtraction so if you if you type pass it you type cast double a and then take the difference your result uh, and then of course now now you will have both positive and negative so you have to take now the absolute of this difference but converting will is simple converting will not help you will have to also take the absolute difference then so partially this will help if you are after taking the difference you are taking the absolute value will this help why not zero won't be zero if you are doing a minus b the negative difference will be clipped to zero you will have only the positive difference from so wherever a is greater than b you will it will preserve that information and wherever b is greater than a it will preserve that information so effectively you have preserved both the difference so this will all, this will actually help so i have just uh, sorry so if you are not convinced let us see the dem, uh, the matlab implementation of the same concept so i am taking two images uh you yeah, have i have shown these images image of coin and image of cameraman in the earlier class both are of same size so i have taken resize it so first of all i am just taking a difference from points minus cameraman and i will show the show the uh, and plot the difference so what it is so it is not so it has taken a difference so we are subtracting from coin uh, the cameraman image from the coins image okay so you can see the majority of so wherever coins uh, and the intensity value of the coin image was greater there there we have preserved the image difference but wherever cameraman intensity was probably higher that has all been been clipped to zero okay if you do the if you do the subtraction the other way cameraman minus coins then we'll get this kind of an image same thing will happen here so uh, you have you have you have preserved a difference wherever the cameraman image was greater than the coins image but in case if you wanted to if you wanted the absolute difference one thing i'm just showing whether if if you first we subtract any of the two and then take the absolute function will that help so that image is the same as this image that doesn't helps that we have already discussed why it won't help but if we take if we add the two differences difference 1 and difference 2 that should help and that is what i am going to plot next so you can say this has preserved the absolute difference between the both the images 
and if you are not if you don't want to worry about that there is a uh, inbuilt function i am absolute difference you can just use that then you don't have to worry about these things so that will also give the same result and the other option that i said you can actually also convert into floating point and then take the absolute difference and that will also uh, give the same result so all these three of possibilities are there if you want to preserve the absolute difference either convert to floating point or use the image absolute difference function or just be cautious while you are separating the another question for you such uh, application question so normally in uh, in industrial inspection uh, assembly where products are assembled normally sometimes image processing uh, is used to automate the uh, the checking part so whether part is whether some part is missing or not so generally there uh, a golden image is taken a reference image is taken which is an image of a perfect assembly where the there is a where the product has been assembled properly there was no missing things and then when the new products are come come their new image is taken and then we simply do the subtraction ideally the difference would be zero if the new products are assembled correctly that is true uh, difference images for products with missing component would be non zero in the regions where they differ from the golden image so that is a general principle but to make this thing work in practice what conditions do you think should be satisf should be uh, met or should be so one is uh, there should be same illumination condition uh, in... so one is same illumination okay what else where we are subtracting so when we are subtracting we have to ensure that the positions of the uh, similar regions are are same so that is that means the two images should be aligned so the images should be images should be we'll talk about this in today's class itself uh, how we do this this is technically called image registration any other condition hmm okay so we have to decide we have to decide what is the minimum uh, difference that we want to oh, so that is not a condition that is just an implementation detail we will have to decide for a threshold to beyond which we will say that this is a difference or this is a valid difference or this is not a valid difference any other so there can be more we have not talked a little bit we have talked about it but later on we will also talk we have to noise plays a very important role in this kind of situation so the noise should be very less as compared to the original signal information generally we say signal to noise ratio should be high that means the uh, noise should be very, very minimal or ideally no noise I, ideally it's not possible to have no noise but signal to noise ratio should be very very high so these are some uh, important conditions that should be met if this thing has to go on okay then uh, coming to multiplication operation multiplication is also a very frequent operation which we need to do so many times in a, in, a, in an image we are interested only in a particular region so that is called region of interest so let us say here we are interested only in this part of the teeth and here we are this is a dental x ray image so we can actually create a mask image
which has uh, wherever the region of interest we are interested we'll make that as one and other things as zero so we'll make a binary mask image so this will be a a binary mask image now whenever a new image comes we just if we want to remove all the other regions we just multiply with this binary mask image so then it's a, again it's a scalar multiplication it's not actual multi matrix uh, matrix multiplication so it's element by element multiplication so wherever so because the mask image is is going to basically filter out or remove make all the other background as zero and it will only retain the and the region of interest images which you would like to process further so generally as a pre processing many times this kind of thing may be needed to automate the process rather than manually always segmenting out things we'll just prepare a mask image and we'll use that again and again so again a simple question so many times this may this multiplication operation may be needed for creating our animation videos or even cartoon videos or whatever so this is an example here let us say we have a background image here we have a image or the caricature of the uh, tom and jerry here and we want to create this composite image where we want to place both of these onto this background image and get this resultant image so what sequence of operation should we do so let us say this is our background image b this is the image t and this is the image j so what if we will have to do some simple um, arithmetic operations to get this composite image what will be that how will we get this final image that is already zero uh, black portions values will be zero by that you will know that this is the background and this will have some intensity values so right now don't worry about the color let us suggest as you meet the black and white gray scale uh, gray scale image it doesn't matter even if you assume color but just for simplicity so wherever this is a uh, black portion the intensity value will be zero what should we do <laughs> i i want to do i have i just i want answer in terms of arithmetic operations between b t and j to get f huh. so how will you write it arithmetically here i am telling you which is a such just a simple arithmetic operation arithmetic and logical operation of course you will have to we have you can represent it by a simple arithmetic and logical operation on the matrix so we have three matrices b t and j matrices and we'll have to do some arithmetic or logical operation on this matrices to get this f so we'll first do so let us say add tom and j so how will you implement that we can do that way can we use a uh, can we create a mask image by which we'll multiply okay then i'll leave this an exercise to you will you do it in the 
You do it in the lab next. Nothing here. If you want to, if you want to only retain the region of interest. So as I said, these are our region of interest. We have to create a binary mass where only where there is one corresponding to region of interest. One means here to five. Uh, so we'll, this is a logical matrix zero and one. So all other places are zero. Only this place is one. We'll multiply it with this. We'll have this. Hmm. If anybody has, if anybody has the answer, let me know. We can do this way. This day, I, I want a simple expression. I don't want an exp, uh, exp, uh, explanation. Okay, I'll, I'll leave this an exercise. Think over it. Today, today only you have uh, this uh, lab lab exercise, na? You can try it out. I will give you these images. You can try it out. Okay. We'll move forward. Um, sometimes, so right till now we have discussed element by element operation, either multiplications, addition, subtraction. Sometimes uh, operations that may be performed can be kind of a neighborhood operation. So where we, instead of just taking the corresponding pixels in more than one images, we may want to take a region. Uh, all all the pixel values in a particular region. So, for example, here we may want to an average. Uh, so, uh, let us say in this case, what this application is showing, we are trying to do a averaging operation in a neighborhood. So, basically, so let us say this is f x comma y. So, I am trying to. Uh, so let us say there is a there is a neighborhood of m cross n along uh, we define s s x y is a region which is a region of m cross n size around the pixel. So in that region, let us say if I sum up sum up all the values of f x y and take an average, so I'll divide by the total number of pixels m into n. This will give you uh, the new The new value in the target image. So this this intensity value will be a average intensity value in this neighborhood. Similarly, we'll repeat this for every location. So the resultant image will, in this case, for example, if you do this kind of averaging operation here, we'll get this kind of an image. So we have used a size of 15 by 15 neighborhood on around around which I have we have done a kind of an averaging operation so what so what is this image so it's a blurred image as you can see so why why it will be useful can you guess seeing the result why we would like to One ob obvious reason we'll see later on, many times image will be noisy. If we do this kind of averaging operation, we kind of uh, smooth out the noise. We'll see later on. Of course, this here we are doing a uh, blurring to a large extent. So this is not exactly for noise protection, but later on we'll see by doing a uh, neighborhood averaging, we can actually smooth out the noise. Because generally in a neighborhood, the intensity values are almost similar correlated if you don't go and take a large neighborhood if you take choose a relatively small neighborhood the intensity value will be will be almost similar so when we average it out again as we have shown the in the previous class uh, the the dominant intensity value will remain and the noise will get uh, suppressed so that will have an effect but here the application what we are showing here is let us say here what we are interested we are interested this is again doing a local blurring and let us say we are only interested in uh, objects here of of a reasonably larger size. So probably this is a galaxy image with different uh, space objects, and uh, we are probably if we, if we are if we want to remove regions which are irrelevant for us, 
So the, the, the relevance here is, is basically on the size of the object. So we can define a appropriate neighborhood and then do a local blurring. So what will happen? The smaller size Im images will get because the background is mostly black. So smaller size, size image uh, objects will get blended with the background because there, when we take a neighborhood around those, it will be mostly black. So the smaller objects will, as we have seen, they are born almost closer to the background intensity value. And only objects which are of larger size, they have only, uh, they have also got blood, but they have, they have been, uh, they have not been totally eradicated. So now after this, if we do a thresholding operation, so where we decide a threshold, let us say some threshold which is closer towards zero. So anything beyond that, only we will make it one and all of the things will make it zero. So what it is, this image is actually now is only retaining those objects which are of, of a particular size. That size will actually be dependent on the neighborhood that you choose. It will be relative to the neighborhood that you choose. So this, this is one application where Many times we would like to do it because in the, your image may have a lot of irrelevant regions which which we want to pre-process it out. Otherwise, that may create problem later on. So we would like to suppress, we would like to remove that in the background and we'll be only preserving the, uh, the larger areas of interest. And from here, so this will create a mask image and with this mask image, we'll multiply with this and we'll be able to pre-process out automatically most of the uh, irrelevant portion of your image. So we'll, in the in fact, our next uh, topic will be neighborhood-based operations. We'll discuss more detail later on. This is just to tell you one uh, simple thing. Okay. So, any question till this point? Hmm? Because I'm going to change little bit. The next thing is is going to be now for a particular operations that we are going to discuss. So we are now going to discuss geometric uh, transformations in an image. So many times you would like to scale up the image, rotate it, translate it, stretch it, and do all kinds of things. So for when we are going to do that, we'll have to do some kinds of transformation. We'll discuss that, but also we'll need some kind of interpolation techniques. Because when we are trying to, for example, when we are trying to upscale an image, we want to, let us say, five, uh, 256 by 256 image, if we want to rescale it to 1024 by 1024. Then what will happen is that we'll have more number of pixels here than the number of pixels we had in the original image. And how we are going to decide the intensity values in the new image should be according to the original image. So, let us say this is so so this let us say this pixel corresponded to this pixel so we'll give the same intensity value of this pixel to the, this pixel <laughs> similarly this intensity pixel probably would correspond to this pixel and we'll give the same intensity value to that one but what about these new pixels that have been created so here we are just trying probably we have just scaled it up by by a factor of two in each dimension so uh this pixel, this, this, these are the additional pixels that have been created. And if you try to map it in the original image, they will map to some non-integer locations. So this will be, so these are integer values. So this will be like at 2.5 comma 1.5. If it was an analog image, we would have probably known the value what was here, but we have already sampled it out. It's a digital image. We are only preserving values of this image only at the integer locations. So we will have already uh, thrown off these intensity values here. So we don't know these intensity values here. So if you want to give some intensity value here, we have to do some kind of an interpolation operation. Isn't it? So we'll see. So this need may require many times, not only for rescaling when we want to rotate it, or when we want to stretch it or whatever, the the new uh, image coordinates, if you try to map with the origin point, they may not map to integer locations. They will map to some, may map to some non-integer locations. So at that time, we'll have to do some kind of image interpolation. So from a mathematics, we can 
I don't know whether you have, but at least there are three major tech, uh, interpolation techniques. One is the simplest, which is called uh, nearest neighbor. So in that, what you just uh, you just take the value of the closest neighbor. So whatever. So for this pixel, you just find the closest neighbor. Here, probably if there are four closest neighbor, you just choose any one of them or take the average of them. Uh, but the idea is you just find the closest neighbor and just give the assign the value of that under the assumption because uh, closer pixels will have probably will tend to have the same intensity values. If you want to get better approximation, you can go for a bilinear interpolation or a bicubic interpolation. In bilinear interpol interpolation, what we take instead of just choosing the closest neighbor, we take the four closest neighbors and do and then do a bilinear interpolation. We'll talk about that later on. In and in bicubic, it's uh, we 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 go and take uh, the nearest 16 neighbors and go for a more uh, accurate interpolation using a bicubic equation. So this will give the best result, obviously, but it will be a little computationally expensive, and this will be give the least the the worst result, but it will be very fast. And the example is shown here. So here we are trying to we have taken a 128 by 128 image. And stretch it to 1024 image. So the first row, and this was probably the original image was 64 by 64. So first row images are the result of nearest neighbor interpolation. The second one is the result of bilinear interpolation, and the last one is result of bicubic. So you can see the the nearest neighbor interpolation will have certain artifacts introduced because of approximation. And bicubic will be more smoother, and bilinear will be more smoother. In practice, bilinear is sufficient. If you are not for image processing techniques, mostly bilinear interpolation is sufficient for us. So, how do we do this? Uh, so, let us say we have our original image is I1, and uh, and we want to get we want to basically uh, get it get transform it to a i2 image of size m2 by n2 and original image of size m1 by n1 so uh, let us say the original image called uh, spatial coordinates uh, the variables are v by w and the the transformed image coordinates are x and y so here in this case we are just showing a scaling simple scaling operation here so there will be a scaling in x direction and there will be a scale factor in y direction hmm. so that scale factor will be based on the ratio of the dimension so m1 n1 by n2 and m2 by sorry this should be this should also be m1 most of the time we will want the inverse uh, function because we'll have to we'll have to scan the normally we'll scan this output image and from there we'll try to get uh, the output image coordinates they are mapping to which coordinates in the original image so generally we'll so forward if you represent the forward uh, transformation by t mostly we'll be interested in t inverse because we'll we'll scan this image apply the t inverse to get the original coordinates and from there we will do the interpolation um, so just a sorry So here I have written a simple code for nearest neighbor interpolation. I am reading an image cameraman.tiff, which is of size m1 by n1. Let us it will is normally of size 256 by 256. And I want to let us say resize it. I want to scale it up by a factor of 2 in each dimension. So our scaling factor Cx and Cy will depend, will accordingly be measured. So what I am going to do, I am going to basically apply that scaling factor to uh, basically uh, so so we will basically pick the nearest neighbor so nearest neighbor in this case we are just rounding it off to the nearest integer value and then based on that we are getting the the intensity image in the new this 
the output image from the original image. So this is the this is the original image and this is the interpolated image scaled up by a factor of 2 in each dimension. So you can see there is a, a zigzag kind of an artifact here uh, because of this sampling effect. Can we cross this? Uh, for bilinear interpolation, as we said, we'll take the four nearest neighbor and interpolate based on their values. So it's equivalent to doing linear interpolation in each dimension. So first interpolate in one dimension and then the other dimension. So let us say if you want to find the value at P. So we will first try to get values at R2 and R1 using interpolation in X direction. So so the value at R1 based on the X1, X2 coordinates and X coordinate here can be interpolated doing a linear, simple linear uh, interpolation will give these values. So I hope the linear interpolation should be okay with all, with everybody. So it's a simple linear interpolation. So taking the values here, these two values here and doing a simple, uh, so value of Fx, at fq1 and values at F2. and based on this distance and this distance and the overall distance we are doing a we are basically interpolating the value at fr1 similarly the value at fr2 and once we have these two values then we can interpolate in this direct we can interpolate in in this direction to get the value at P. And this is equivalent to uh, say represent alternately we can actually represent our fxy as a as a bi cube as a cube as a quadratic equation with four unknowns. So our fxy will be a0 plus a1x plus a2y plus a3xy and using these four uh, four pixel values we can get four linear equations. So we'll put these four uh, x, y values for these four uh, chord locations. We'll get four equations. If we put uh, the, that in this equation, so using those four equations, we can satisfy, we can actually determine these four unknowns. So it's a simple system of four uh, linear equations, which can be, which has a unique solution, which will give us these things. And based on that, we will calculate this thing. So normally you don't have to implement it in a MATLAB or in whatever platform you use. You can specify what interpolation method you have to use. And uh, we'll show you later on some, and it will actually do your interpolation accordingly for you. So it's it's not so computationally expensive. So normally you should ideally should go for bilinear interpolation most of the time. <coughs> 